I'm Lee Spencer with the Racing Boys, and I'm talking to Joe Custer. Joe, what a phenomenal year for Stuart Haas Racing, the first time in the organization's history. You've put all four cars into the playoff. It's kind of like uh, watching all your kids leave the nest. Yeah, no, to get all in the final eight, uh, let alone the playoffs, is a huge achievement. The other thing that the guys are just mentioning is uh, every single driver that strapped into a Stuart Haas car won a race this year, whether it be Xfinity or Cup or anything. So, you know, that's something we're real proud of as an organization. Our guys and girls and women uh, put a lot into everything we do, and uh, just uh, I'm just really happy with, with the performance. What do you think has been the difference between – you know, last year, I mean, clearly you, you've got a new driver with Eric Almarola, but um, to have everybody buy into one specific program, that's not always easy when you're dealing with the egos of drivers. Nah, but, you know, there's some good leadership there. You know, Kevin Harvick is a good leader. Um, you know, Kurt, we, we do. We have guys that, that get it, and um, that hasn't been a problem, candidly. Uh, I think it's I think it, uh, the key has been that we, they that we've built trust with the drivers that their stuff is is equal, and and I think that helps. There is I don't think they believe uh, that they're getting uh, short you know the short end of any stick at Stuart Haas Racing. So as long as we continue that kind of quality control and and delivery on product, I think our drivers understand you know we're giving them the tools they need and they keep focused on their own team building their relationship with their crew chief and executing at the track, not worrying about, you know, other items that are happening at the shop. Um, we, I think we've built enough confidence in the speed in our cars that all of our drivers feel comfortable. We had a great chat with Cole the other day, and, you know, of course he goes on and wins. Um, it's kind of hard to peg your own child's development, and sometimes you have to wear the dad hat, sometimes you have to wear the manager hat. From the manager standpoint, how have you seen Cole develop over the last couple of years? Yeah, I try to. I, I was talking to somebody. I try to use analytics for that because obviously I have a, a conflict, <laughs> an emotional conflict. So I try to just look at the analytics with Cole and say, okay, you know, laps led, uh, pole speed, um, quality passes, uh, average finishes, how we unload on the average. Just look at statistics. And that helps me keep focused on what, you know, how I think he's improving instead of just getting emotional and thinking, well, you know, either either I'm too hard on him or the program or too, uh, you know, too much of a, of a cheerleader. So that's what I do is, is look at the analytics and let them let it bear from, you know, the, the, the facts bear themselves out. Uh, he also told us he'll be running a full season next year, but there's been rumors that Chase Briscoe might be driving a second Stuart Haas racing car or Biagi de Besti, however you want to categorize it, alongside Cole. Is that part of the plan right now? We would love to. Um, we're still working on our deals. Uh, I think something will be happen quick. Um, it's and and but you know we've we've never uh, the double zeros never really had a teammate. So it would be, I think that's one of the areas that, uh, to go to that next level, the Gibbs guys do a really nice job, and the, and the uh, JRM, JRM guys, and these guys have three and four teams each. That's what we compete against as a single-car team. And um, I'm trying, not trying to make excuses, but as we look at ways to go to the next level, you know, that's been on our, on our you know, we've been looking at it. But keep in mind, the only reason we're doing Xfinity is to develop drivers. It, you know, we don't intend to be dominant Xfinity team. We're we're there to be, you know, to develop drivers and people and crew and such. So, you know, there's a balance there. But uh, yeah, if we could run a second team, I think it would help the overall program if we can get it done. How cool though to lock Cole in for him to be the first Xfinity driver to cash his ticket, so to speak, to Homestead, Miami, and knowing that last year he won that race. I mean, he's he's got to have a, you know, his yeah. confidence has to be high, which hasn't always been the case for Cole. Yeah, no, I think, it, you know, Cole's uh, a pretty steady Eddie guy, actually. I mean, he gets frustrated, but, you know, he, he gives it, you know, I, I don't think he really turned it up a notch this weekend. People, You, you want to think that. But I think he turns it up. You know, he. I think I think that's in there all the time. We just got to get it in the right situation, 
get the cars where where he where he's giving the right kind of feedback so that the car is where it needs to be at near the end of the race. We got track position. We you know all the things got to come together. I think that program could have easily won four to five races this year, had the speed to, but it just didn't execute the final, you know, final end of the race well. So we end up with second place finishes, a lot of them. Um, so it's it, it's not like some that like that team was running fifteenth, and all of a sudden they uh, you know found something. Uh, I really think it was just uh, just hard work and and pretty consistent through the year. Again, if you look at the statistics, it. It's been there all year statistically. It's just the W's haven't been there. The second places have been there, but not the W's. So we get we check that box off, and they'll go to the next two races just like they came here and just like they went to Kansas. They were ready to you know do the same thing at Kansas until some guys up front can't figure it out how to get through a corner, and then the same thing happens this week. People can't figure out how to get through a corner. You know they, they really gotta we gotta you know work a little bit on. But that's what the Xfinity Series is for. I will say he really gutted it out at Kansas, and I think that was the difference between where he is now, um, you know, and where he might have been. Plus, I also will say from sitting up in the press box, he really went balls out in stage two, and then what he did on those last two restarts sealed the deal for him. Yeah, no, it, it was a good day. We didn't get much help. The, I think uh, the 42 didn't push us on the final restart. And the one is the best pusher in the in the garage, so we kind of got our, you know, we had a disadvantage on that final restart. But Cole did a nice job of keeping it up and came out second. And then luckily there was enough in the car and he executed well on the final lap, made a clean pass. Um, unfortunately, you know, they got together on the back stretch. I, you know, I'll let those two talk about that. But um, I think Cole did a nice job of car control, holding on to it and just drove it home. So yeah, it was a good day. We'll take it for sure. And on the on the cup side, you know, there's been questions whether or not anything with the Haas F1 transfers over to NASCAR. Um, you know, it, it might seem like apples and oranges, but aren't there certain systems that work on both sides of the motorsports field? You know, there's some software and things like that, but but you know, they're just different disciplines. Um, the, the people can go back and forth, and they do. Um, we don't. Uh, we have moved a couple people back and forth, but it's not so foreign that they you can't move people around. I think the the, the biggest thing, um, though, is is there's some software, uh, you know, understanding of software and technologies that that go between the two. We don't uh, and sponsorship development. That's a big area that we're trying to to continue to develop. Is you know we're the only American F1 team, and we try to meld that and find partners that find benefit in that and mix it up with the sponsorship on, on NASCAR side. But other than that, I don't, I wouldn't consider it some, you know, secret advantage candidly, but I think it's, uh, it offers our employees um, more growth potential. And so may, maybe that's a draw as well, helps our recruiting, things like that. Gene said back at Las Vegas that if Kurt won the championship, we might even see him back in the 41. I know there's been a lot of rumors and such, but um, is that possibly on the table? Yeah, I don't I, I don't get in the middle of that one. That, that would be a Gene and Kurt discussion. Uh, you'd have to talk to those guys. <laughs> on that note, <laughs> I want to thank you for your time and, and uh, good luck today. Thanks.